Hey, Shalom Israel, Bishop Nathaniel here. We're about to do an interview with a very famous or infamous brother whom the world calls General Butt Naked. Now, General Butt Naked, his real name is Joshua Milton Bailey or something along those lines. Anyway, he says he has repented of his sins, so we're not going to pass judgment on him. That's between him and the Most High. And he is inquisitive and wants to hear the scriptures taught properly and identify who the remnant of Israel is here in Africa, particularly here in Liberia. So that's what you're about to see. So we're not going to stand and take, make judgment. Remember, the Apostle Paul killed many people. He dragged many men, women, and children into jail. He did many things that he was later ashamed of. So he repented. So repentance is open to all of us. He tells us he repents. We're going to leave it like that in the Most High's hands. All right? So y'all stay tuned for what you're about to see. Anybody got a fly? Flies? Yeah, please. I want to talk. Share with the brother. I understand you got a church. Not even. No, not really. Well, my name is Joshua Milton Blay. Uh, I was known as General Botnicki in the Liberian Civil War. I was a warlord who was uh, had a brigade that was with naked people. And we were naked because we were not using physical medic, military tactics. We were using spiritual tactics. Uh, and uh, it came about because I was the priest to my tribe. I was born to be the priest to my tribe, the Kran tribe, that Sergeant Doe, uh, the one who overthrew Tolba, came from. He was a Kran man. And I was the priest to him, so I advised him and gave him spiritual guardians and the rest of the tribe. So when the war came, 1989, I needed to protect the tribe as a priest. And uh, to protect the tribe, uh, I made a lot of human, innocent children sacrifices to the deity to, to accumulate more spiritual powers for my protect for the protection or for the implementation of my protection over the tribe and several several human sacrifices and uh, one last uh, sacrifice that was so hard to do because the child that would use was brought by her own mother and uh, she was so beautiful and peaceful she was being given to me and she was like smiling you know, and I thought that child should not die. But with the demand, uh, you know, from darkness, the demand from evil, the demand from the mother, and see my people die, I had to sacrifice her. And uh, right after that sacrifice, the blood stain of that child was in my hand when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. He appeared to me not in the dream physically, and he called me his son with the blood of this innocent child in my hands. And uh, he asked me to repent, which was the beginning of my life turning around. And I repented by the grace of God. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Yes. This very nation so that has rejected you. Yes. This very citizen that said nothing good come out of you. Yes. I stay in the name of the Lord this morning. Yes. I said, go show yourself to Liberia. Yes. I stand before you this hour. Yes. I said, go show yourself to your family. Yes. Go show yourself to the society. Yes. I command you this morning. In the name of the law, in the mighty name of the law, that you will go and they will see no limitation in you. I declare that limitation of your broken. I declare it broken. I declare it destroyed by the power in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, your name is Joshua Milton Blight, Bly, the former general. Former General Butnick. Okay, now, the language of... Little son, you got you ready for me? 
the, the original language I was reading up spoke a spoke a Niger Congo language. The language is Crown. Yes. Crown. K R K R A H N. Okay. Okay. No so you originally come from you. You part of the Sampo. Yes, Sampo. So I'm doing a little research on you. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little research on it. Now, let me share with you regarding what we need to do. Because I understand you're a Christian. Okay. You understand that modern day Christianity is white supremacy. Meaning, you know that I'm saying that people say Jesus is white, right? Which is not found in the Bible. Okay. Who got the Bible? I got it. Help me out here. Help me out here. I just want to share this with you. Does this work? Yes, sir. Do you want to read it? Uh, Type in, uh, go to Google. That's Google. Type in, uh, Jesus. Let's see what pop up. And don't run, and remind me, I want to discuss what's going on in South Africa. Okay. I want to get your point of view on that. Hey, make sure a shot. Make sure a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Photos of image. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, click that one. Yeah. Anyone? That one. The second one. Yeah. The second one? Mm-hmm. We were uh, in Ghana months ago and this image is everywhere in Ghana, just like in America. Almost here too. Yes. yes. Almost, it's almost coming up, Cap. Just, just bear with us. It's coming, it's coming. Okay. Okay, now you see these images, right? These images are worldwide. Now, when we look into the Bible, okay, this is what I want to share with you. Okay. Read that first verse, okay, Revelation. This, this Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now, jump down to verse 14, because John sees Christ, and he writes down his description. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. You know what woolly hair is? His hair and his head was white like wool. You know what wool is? Wool is like, you see his head? Thick black people hair. Okay. okay, so this is wrong here. This is wrong. This isn't white hair and it's not wool. This is thin hair. Okay. Can I, can I take notes? Yes, yes, yes. You got a pen. Yeah. You got a pen. Yeah. You got a pen. Moses, you got a pen? You got a pen or paper? It's Revelation yeah, chapter, chapter 1. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was verse 14. Okay, so the first thing is that. Yeah, I think. Let me see, we don't have the, uh, what's the Jesus? Oh, no, it's right here. Okay. I got it there, so you don't need it. See, we, we did it for you. <laughs> so that way you can read along with us. We typed it up. Read it again. This is Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hands were white like wool, as white as snow. So look here. We did an illustration here. This is wool. Okay. Opposed to this is straight, stringy hair. Okay. okay. Go ahead. And his eyes was a flame of fire. Now when it says his eyes was a flame of fire, the prophet Moses had a vision of Christ and he prophesied what he would look like. Read that, Genesis 49. Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Do you remember Christ's first miracle? Yeah. Who was it? He turned the water into wine. Very good. And he, of course he sucked on it, he drank wine. So his eyes were red, the whites of his eyes were red. 
I watch this. Go back to Revelation. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 1, verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So general. Brass is what color? Brass. What color is brass? It's uh, supposed to be brown. Yes. As if it burned in a furnace. So what? It's a darker brown, right? Like you, like me. So the Bible is giving you a clear description of the Son of God. That he looks like us. And this is something that white supremacy racism has rejected for centuries. This is how they were able to indoctrinate us and subjugate us for centuries. Because you mean they never read this? The white scholars never read that? Christians never read that? We're, the first, we're not the first to read this. People have read it and rejected the word of God for centuries. This is how they were able to colonize Africa and enslave many of the inhabitants that were here to send us throughout America and the world. And they taught us the false image of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? This is why, watch this, watch what Christ said in Matthew 24 and verse 5. And now this is a shocker right here. Give me Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. You get it? Okay, Matthew chapter 24 verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Wow, now let's examine that. Who, who is the many? that came in Christ's name saying they are Christ. Who's the many? When it came throughout Africa, they came with images and they said, we are Christ. We're the people of God. This is how they were able to colonize Africa. This is how they were able to enslave the inhabitants that were here and sent out to Europe, America. You understand? Christ is warning us there that people would come saying they are Christ and shall deceive men. If I go throughout this hotel and ask people, give me that picture again, where is it? Okay, let's just use this. If I ask them who is that, what do you think people will say? Yes, if I ask them who is this, they'll say, I don't know. So they've, we've all been deceived by modern day Christianity. Modern day Christianity is a philosophy of Satan because it lies against the word of God. They will teach God's children, us, and say, no, 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 you're not the people of God. And they'll say that they are. They give you false paintings, false images like that. What color is that hair? Brown. You see a little yellow in there? Yeah, gold. Right. Watch what the Bible says about yellow hair. Watch this. It's Leviticus chapter 13. This is going to shock you. Yeah. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if, it's, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. You hear that? Yellow thin hair is leprosy. Yellow thin hair, what we call blonde. We say, oh, blonde, beautiful, beautiful. The Bible says leprosy. You mean they never read that? These Christian scholars never read that? They read that. They reject the Bible. And they'll teach many other black women, like all throughout uh, uh, Liberia, and we see women, they put the yellow hair and they weave it in because they want to look like the European. Ooh. Never knowing that God says that's leprosy. You understand? So the Bible gives you the description of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to show you the angels. You ready for this one? Get Ezekiel 113. And these are basic scriptures. Okay, we want to, what was the radio show we were on yesterday? 98. 98.1 FM. And people were calling and shocked. They said we have to reread re our Bibles. You know? Christian ministers called and says, I'm a minister, I've never read this. <laughs> Watch this. This is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. You see that? The living creatures are the angels. Their appearance is like burning coal. You know what a coal looks like? What yeah. color is a coal? Black. 
So there was no such thing as a little white angel with pink skin and yellow hair. False. False. Total false. It's, it's meant to give us a self-hatred for each other. That way when we see Europeans, we think God. I see you, you see me, you see the devil. Mm. You know, that's what is brainwashing. We have been brainwashed, okay, for centuries. Now, let's get some more. You heard of the Israelites, right? The Jews. Yeah. Let's see what the Bible describes them as. Get King Solomon. Okay. You might want to write this one down too. Song of Solomon. I get it, I get it. Chapter 1. Again, these are basic scriptures. Okay, this Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Read verse 1 so we know who wrote that. Verse 1, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now verse 5 again. I am black but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So King Solomon was the king of Israel. He said, what did he say about himself? Black yes, a black man. But today, when you think of a Jew, you think the white man is Israel. Mm -mm. King Solomon says, I am black. Give me the prophet Job. You heard of Job? Let's see what he looks like. It's, everything's described in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. And my bones are burned with heat. Wait, read it again. My skin is black upon me. And my bones are burned with heat. So Job says my skin is black. We meet many ministers and European ministers so often say, oh, that's his emotions. He was suffering. But read it again. Look at the first two words. My skin. It says my skin, not my emotions. So this is how Christians like to twist the scriptures. So we tell a minister, no, no, it doesn't say my emotion. He says my skin is black upon me. You see this? So we've been lied to. All of us. So the so are we what they, they use the word of God for to prove supremacy. Yep. Yes. <laughs> They, that's how they, they, they use the word of God to prove their superiority, okay, and to, to subject us under them, you understand? So they, they have doctrines of devils, like it says in 1 Timothy 4, about many shall, some shall depart from the faith. Give me that, 1 Timothy 4, in one. You know I can't quote to you, I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in a lot of times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You see that? Seducing spirits, doctrines of devils. So, in these last days, many of us have been colonized and enslaved. We've given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay? Now, watch this. Give me a, a Jeremiah 14, 2 about the tribe of Judah. In Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2 Judah mourning and the gates thereof languish they are black unto the ground you see that they are black meaning black like the earth black like the soil like oh Adam Genesis 2 7 the first man you'll see movies on TV and show Adam as a white man watch what the Bible says Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground what color is the dust of the ground Jeremiah? <laughs> it looks like you and me, right? It's black. Yeah. Yes! So, all through the Bible, they give you descriptions of the Jews, the Israelites, God, Christ, but no one, the, we've been taught not to accept it because of Christianity. Many of your ministers here in Liberia will teach us this, and we, like, we've been on a radio show, we've met some of the streets, say, we challenge you to prove this in the Bible. They can never prove it, they can't prove that, because it's not there. You know, so they have to humble down. That's what they must do. All of our people must come back to these records. Some of us have used, I used to think the Bible was a white man's book. You know, because they taught us to pray like this with our eyes closed. Then when, by the time we opened our eyes, they stole our land resources and they gave, put the book in our hand. But not realizing that that book was our book from the beginning. 
this is why they had put up laws where they forbid black people to read for a long time. That's why they keep us uncivilized, okay? Remember, the, the first empires on earth were all black. The white man came in around the time of the Greeks, around 333, okay? And since that time, they've kept us low, you understand? Like, for example, they have um, in Libya today, you saw the news what's happening in Libya? No. Where they're selling uh, blacks as slaves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Many of the African leaders are afraid to even do anything. You have people from Liberia who are looking for a better life. Go yeah. there and being sold as it's slaves. It's all in the news. Yes. Yeah. And it, not just there. It's in Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and nobody does nothing. Black leaders are afraid to do anything. Okay. But now, I want to show you what happened to the people of God. Watch this. Give me that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 28, yeah. verse 15. Right. This is when um, the 12 tribes of Israel came out of Egypt, which is, you know, was in Africa. Uh, and Moses told the 12 tribes, if you break God's laws, this is what will happen to you. Okay, read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. We jump down to verse 32, watch this. Verse 32. I just want some key points. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So it says your sons and daughters shall be given to another people. What's that called? Slavery. Slavery. Go ahead. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there should be no might in thy hand. So they took out sons and daughters. They sent some to America, some to uh, Central South, some to Europe, some to Netherlands, some to China, some to Iran, some to Iraq. And there's no power to retrieve our sons and daughters back. Okay? So when it says there should be no might in your hand, no economic might, no military might, no political might. The same thing going on today. We have no might to to redeem our sons in Libya. What can we do? Everyone's afraid, okay? So we're living the curses of the Bible. Let's get some more, verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Wait, read it again. Therefore you shall what? Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So it says you will serve who? Your what? Enemy. Your enemies. God is usually, he's saying, listen, you're going to serve your enemies for food, clothing. This is why they control all the resources, okay? Like we went to Belgium some time ago. Belgium is beautiful. But where did they get the wealth? It's so from the Congo under King Leopold. Mm -hmm when they colonized the Congo, took all the resources to Belgium. Belgium is a, is a glorious empire now. The Congo looks like crap. Okay, even through Liberia here, it looks like crap here. Haiti, same way, they, they come, they steal, they take. Okay, read that again. Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Do me a favor, type in yoke of iron on your computer. Just want to see what, what that's talking about. Yoke. Hmm. Y-O-K-E, yoke of iron. Under images. Do you see this? Do you see this? These are yokes of iron on black people. Oh, you see that? These are yokes of iron on the neck. So the Bible is telling you that the Israelites, this would happen to them. This did not happen to the white man in Israel today. This happened to us. We are the people of the world. 
Okay? We are part of the 12 tribes of Israel that the Bible speaks of. Now watch this. You know that some history of Liberia. Remember the slaves that was in American Canada, they sent shiploads back here and set up Liberia. Yeah. Watch this, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now the word Egypt, that makes confusion. Wow. Egypt is bondage. Yeah. It says the Lord will bring you into bondage again with what? With ships. With ships. Yes. Right Go ahead. By the way of thereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You wouldn't see your homeland no more again. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. No man shall buy you. No man shall save you from the condition. So once we got off those slave ships, we were sold. Okay? The people of Liberia were sold and they sent them back in 1822. Okay? This is, we're living the Bible. And we haven't realized that that is our book. We've been reading the Bible through white man eyes. When we think Moses, we think white man. We read Jesus, we think white man. We think Israelites, we think white man. We think the Jews, we think white man. <laughs> This is us. But now here's a question. Watch this. So then if we are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, then who is the white man in Jerusalem? Watch this. Revelation 2 9. Let's Re go into this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I'll let you write it down. Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know that works and tribulation and poverty. Don't we have tribulation? Don't we have poverty? Good. But thou art rich. He says, Christ says to us, but we're rich because all the promises in the Bible pertain to us. Now watch the next part. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Let him read that for itself. Give, let, let the general read that. God, that might be it's, too much. It's too small. That means it's too small. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. When you guys got to town? We got here Sunday. Was it Sunday or Monday? Monday. Monday. And when are you going? Next week, Monday. Revelation 2. Mm -hmm. King, we mean from the King James Version. You can see it. Two, verse nine. We don't know. I know that works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them we say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. You see that? So we didn't make that up. That's what Jesus, Jesus is saying that. He's warning us. Them people you think are the Jews? Oh, <laughs> they're not the Jews. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't go to regular school. And uh, I was on the front line with the blood stain. Of an innocent child in my hand, and I heard a voice behind me, my son, why are you slaving? And when I looked back, I saw a man. I saw the form of the man, but the person was brighter than the sun that I could not look at them like I'm looking at him. The red from him was so bright. So I had to bow down my head to speak to him. And I actually did not see color. I did not see, I did not, rec I could not recognize a black man or a white man, but his, his glow was so bright. I didn't, I didn't go to regular school to read and write. Mm. And, and I didn't know how to speak English. So he spoke to me in my local tone. He spoke my dialect as if to say, 
is a natural supplement. And it, it was embarrassing with the words, the kind of words he used, but those words, even though they were harsh, but they were passionate. In my dialect, if a man said Andrew, it is a description only a mother can call. A father cannot say Andrew the way it was called. Only a mother can say it because between the father and a child, there is no Levitical cord. So the description of how he called me was like a mother referring to his child, referring to the link of the child because of the Levitical cord. You know, you know what the Levitical cord is? And then, but he said, in my doubt, he said, that is, why are you slaving? That was the, that was the exact interpretation. And at that time, I was supposed to be the Lord and the gospel of this entire territory that you find yourself called Mamuria to me. If I decide you die, nothing could save you except a divine intervention. And if I wanted you to live, if you die, everybody in that area who caused your death or who could not stop your death will also die. And so in my mind, from my orientation, I was supposed to be a king with the, with, in my dialect. But then when he said, why was I slaving? It was so offensive to the person I was, but at the same time, it was so passionate. It was like I was missed position. And the same feeling that I had when I met him, as you speak to me, I'm feeling missed position. I don't know why, you know, I, I really don't know why, but I was brought up in the way my culture trained me to think for myself, to, to not, it's, 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 it's not safe generally, but it has helped me over the years in the sense where I convince, I do my personal research. I will tell you that I had a revelation and the Lord took me into Isaiah chapter 19. Have you read that? Mm -hmm. You read Isaiah chapter 19? Yes. And he called, at the end of it, he called Africa mm. his people. You, you, you want to go there? Let, bless me, Egypt, my people. And he promised that we are going to return to him. Mm -hmm. Let me show you that. Let me show you. Give me the uh, Zephaniah, with precepts with Isaiah 19. Zephaniah uh, 3 and 10. I'm going to start there. Right there. And so, I have, for some reason, mm -hmm. I have refused ordination. Mm -hmm. I refuse the ordination, the regular way it is done. People come and make you bishop, people come and make you pastor, people come and make you evangelist. For some reason, since 1996, mm -hmm. that I met the law, I went to school, I tried to submit myself, not really regular school, mm -hmm. submit myself to learn how to read, to do my own research, and I'm still in the process. And I think I'm looking at this as a privilege, you know, to understand something. Oh, please. But like I said, mm -hmm. when he was, when he spoke to me, 
on the new bridge, 1996. Mm. I felt it, it wasn't the, regularly. If, if, if someone told me that in my dialect, it's an insult. Mm. But it is so. I still recognize it as an insult, mm. but I saw it so passionately. Like, like I saw like a father will see his son in the pool and and say, "You don't belong in the pool." Mm. So the father is telling the son to leave from the mix of the feces with passion, mm. even though he's telling him, "You are mess up." Right. It, it, it sounds like insult, mm. but he's saying it. You know, so like as you were saying, the, the same feeling at that time, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I don't know for what, but I'm, I'm like feeling mis, you know, misplaced. Misplaced. Well, we don't, the Lord's gonna put you in the right place. Okay. <laughs> <Watch this. laughs> Type in a map of uh, rivers of Ethiopia. I just want to see what pop up. Rivers of Ethiopia. Under images. That is uh, E. E T H I O P I A. These are the images. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. Go down. Let me look, let me look. Okay. Click this one. Okay. Roll that big so it feels. I ain't got my glasses. I could barely see. But I think that's what we want. <laughs> okay. Can you see that clear? Yeah. Okay. Now watch this. Zephaniah 3 and 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, suppliants. E mm -hmm. even the daughter of my dispersed. That's what we want. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Go ahead. Shall bring my offering. Shall bring my offering. So now the question is, who is the daughter of my dispersed? Keep reading. Okay. He's going to make it clearer for us. Verse 11. And that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings. Wherein thou hast transgressed against me. Mm -hmm. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people. That's us, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Watch this. The remnant of Israel. See what's calling them? The remnant of Israel. It's telling you that they're beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now, that's Ethiopia here, right? Yeah. You see a dis of Adabasa. And you see the, yeah. the Blue Nile connects to the Nile. Yeah. Look where it goes from Egypt. It goes all the way down here. It's okay. letting you know the remnant of the Israelites would be here in these places. Wow. Although you, many of our people call ourselves these other ethnic names, God says, no, that's the remnant of Israel. That's there. So, look, it goes all the way down through towards Uganda, even. Uh, you got Kenya on one side, you got, uh, what's that on the other side, what did I say? Congo. The Congo, okay. So the Lord, is, he's giving you a map of where the remnant of his people would be. Not just those in America that were sold on ships, but the ones that are here. There's a remnant of the Israelites here, okay. Now watch this, give me the other one in, uh, uh, I got Isaiah 27, 27 and Okay, 13. read that. Let me hear that. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 27. I'm sorry, 12. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall be off from the channel of the river unto the string of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. Wait, who's coming through Egypt? Ye children of Israel. You see that? So letting you know the children of Israel, a remnant is even in Egypt. Yeah. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcast in the land of Egypt and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount 
at Jerusalem. See that? So there's a remnant of Israel from Assyria to Egypt, okay? So this is a history that we've never read. We've never understood it. We've been listening to white people for so long. It's time we gotta stop listening to them. They keep lying to us, okay? Watch this, Zechariah 8, verse seven and eight. I think this, right? Zechariah chapter 8 verse 7 Thus said the Lord of hosts Behold, I will save my people from the east country The east country is Africa Go ahead And from the west country That's the Americas Because we were taken to the west So he's telling you Israel is in the east country and the west <laughs> Go ahead And I will bring them And they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem And they shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So the prophet says he's going to take us to Jerusalem. That's the motherland. Because Jerusalem, when you look at a map, uh, type in uh, uh, Israel. Let me see. Watch this. Or type in Africa and Israel. Type that in. Let me see. Africa? Yeah, Africa and Israel. Africa and Israel. Under images. Okay, we'll do here. Now, you see where Israel is, right? Can you see that? Oh no, that's too far. Will oh, you see a better map? What about here? Remember, uh, when you read the Bible, the name of Israel was originally what? Remember the first name of Israel? Canaan. 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 That was part of the land of Ham, which is Africa, okay? And when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God told them to give it the name Israel. But it's still, it was still a part of this land. This okay. is, it was, wait, it's Israel. Yeah, right there. It was still a part of this land here. Canaan was a son of Ham, which took over this area, okay? When the Israelites came out of Egypt, we went further up into Israel, settled there. So now, historically, what happened? Because in, right now you got white people and Arabs in the land. Christ tells us in Luke 21, listen to this. Go get Luke 21, that way you can read it for yourself. Luke chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. The army is talking about the Roman armies, go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mount. So now, here's a question. When Christ told the Israelites, when you see Jerusalem come past by armies, flee to the mountains, most people don't know what he meant by flee to the mountains. When Herod went to kill uh, Christ as a baby, where did the angel tell Joseph to take Christ and, and Mary? Remember? Where? Egypt. Yes, Egypt is. Africa. Africa. It's the same thing here. When he says flee to the mountains, telling them go deeper into Africa. That's all he's saying. We don't. Uh, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. So it's telling us to depart out of the land. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Don't come back in. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. God was angry with us because we broke his commandments. We always broke his commandments. So he, now Christ is saying, your judgment is coming, Israelites. Now you're gonna have to run, go ahead. But warn to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Uh -huh. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Now do you see verse 24 there? I can't mm -hmm. see. 
Okay, we shall fall by the edge of the sword. Because you had many of our people try to fight Rome, but we lost. Those of us that did not run further into Africa, who stayed to fight, it said we shall fall by the edge of the sword. Go ahead. And shall be and shall be led away captive into all nations. Those that were captured by Rome was led away captive as slaves into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Christ is telling you the people in Jerusalem are the Gentiles. Those are not the real Israelites. <laughs> you see that? Read that again. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see that? So Christ is telling the Israelites, leave this land, run deeper into Africa. And this is what happened. When we read into Africa further in, we scattered. That's why we read Zephaniah. We ran along the Nile River, those areas. We ran further, some went further west towards Ghana, so forth and so on. Some went towards Mozambique. We ran for our lives. Now what, where's that book from Babylon? Show them the cover of that book. Got from Babylon to Timbuktu by uh, Rudolf R. Henson. The history of ancient black races, including the black people. Right, now read that part in there on page 84. Okay, from Babylon to Timbuktu, page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General, General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. What? Over one million Jews fled into Africa. That's what we just read in Luke. We fled into Africa further in there. Go ahead. Fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. So the ones they captured and sold to America and all that were Jews. History, certain historians have discovered that. Our people have to wake up. You understand, General? We have to wake up who we are. We're the Israelites. That the Bible, although we've taken a very ethnic tribal names and all that, the Bible's telling us we're the children of God. Check that out. What do you got to say about that? Y'all can chime in now. Y'all see no. Let me see. Yeah, I like the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, the purpose is when he said he had the, the vision where he say you are the place wherever you are. You've been living your life at the place. You understand? Now, you know what I mean, for reading your history, to see this time here you at, now I understand why you went through everything you went through. Just to be here today for the Lord to show you which way to go about your life. I mean, Christianity is not the way. You are, the, you are from the tribe of Israel, so you have to keep God's commandments. Be able to share people. Wherever you were, if you can change, they can change. You understand? So give most our praise for that, man. Today is a great day. That's how I'm, I'm like uh, vi uh, visualize it to see that because I went, I went to a lot with my life too. But just to for the Lord able to show us where we make error, what we need to do to get the kingdom is a great day today for me. You know, you can reach a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? But you got to take them the true gospel. You know, so like Bishop was saying, Christianity, you know, it destroyed our people. And you know, as we've been going through our Liberia and teaching, you know, on the streets, the different schools, a lot of people got a lot of questions. They don't understand this Bible. But now, you know what I'm saying, you should see that the Most High sent us here to give you the understanding of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So you can go out here and teach the people, because I know uh, at one point, you still be teaching on Sundays, at a congregation, we still teach, be preaching yeah, on Sunday. What happened is, uh, I, 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 I teach almost every day. Okay, almost every day. Almost every day, but I'm focused, like I'm on air, uh, every day except Thursday and Sunday. Yeah, I'm on air every day and. I'm running a project where most of those guys who are led as child soldiers into the war, yeah. I'm trying to bring them back to the Lord. Okay, I've, been, I've been preaching to them, so I'm in the ghettos, 
every day as I leave from here now, I have a meeting with a friend. From there, I'm going back to the ghetto. I, I preach every day. Okay. And my basic message over the years have been, no matter how worse you have gone, if Christ can receive me, he's waiting to receive you. That has been my, my, my basic message. I, I have not, I don't teach baptisms, I don't teach uh, miracle, I don't yeah. teach uh, healing. I, 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 not that I doubt them, but I basically teach the courage that no matter how far you have come, no matter, you can still decide to come back. Yeah. And so I've been talking to those guys in drugs in, that are serious criminals are the people I talk to that they cannot continue living like that. Okay, I'll pray. Now you're going to add this to it. I mean, you know what? A lot of people have a problem coming to Christianity because we see a white, these false images. And until we see ourselves in that book, it's hard for us to really give ourselves 100%. Um, we have to begin this. This is our photo album. This is our records. Okay. So we have to, our young men, once you hear that Solomon is black, Christ, that gives them something to associate with. Oh, so it looks like me. You know, and it gives us self esteem. It uplifts us. Well, I'm sure you feel like that right now. You know, this is how I felt. You know, because for a long time when I thought the Bible was a white man's book, I, after a while I said, I got tired of the white Jesus. Ah, you know, our, our women. You know that we'll be married, but then she's praying to the white man. That's disrespect to us. She lays with you, but she prays to the white man. It's total disrespect. You know, so it makes no mm -hmm. sense. You know. So, so when the Bible is promising uh, freedom to the Gentile, mm -hmm. good. I'm glad you meant that. Okay. Watch this. Give me um, the term Gentile. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. I'm gonna show you something. Because this curse, I didn't read it, but we're going to read it now, since you mentioned Gentiles. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So we read down to 68 earlier about the slave ships, but we want verse 37 to talk about our names being changed. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. Whether the Lord shall lead thee. So when it says thou shalt become a uh, proverb and byword, you know what a byword is? Byword. By like, uh, let's say your name, okay, Liberia. Where'd that name come from? Liberty. Okay, who gave it that name? Monrovia, for example, comes yeah. from who? America. Right. James. James that's a byword, meaning you have your own name that God gave you, but someone else gives you another name. Bywords. What happened to the Israelites, God was saying there, your names, your identities will be changed historically. So that's why, like we read in Zephaniah 3 about the remnant of Israel would be along the Nile, through up beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. They don't call themselves Israelites, they call themselves Congolese, they call themselves Kenyans, they call themselves Egyptians. They, they have taken on the names of where they live. And we've discarded the Israelite name. You understand? So those are in the essence Gentile names. Now watch this. Get Matthew 4.15. Let me show you about how the Israelites lost their identity in example. Now you know some of the 12 tribes, right? Their names. Okay. Matthew chapter 4 verse 15. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You see what they're calling Zebulon and Naphtali? What are they called? The Galilee of the Gentiles. Of the Gentiles. That's what they call it. Gentiles. Now watch this. Hosea 1 and 10. Because the Israelites, they started going into idolatry. That's what started happening. This is why Christ called them the lost sheep. Watch this. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. There's a prophecy. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, 
which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall it be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Ah, uh, let's explain that one down. The people, Liberia, Uganda, Kenya, America, it's being said that they're not God's people because of the name change. You're calling yourselves Liberians, for example. That's not in the Bible. That's a Gentile name. So when you read the Bible, you never associate with it. But notice the prophecy. It says, and in the place, read that part again. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. That's what we're telling you right now. You are the sons of the living God. You've been thinking you are like Liberian or Sarp, Sarp, what's the word? Sarpo, you're Sarpo. Sarpo, all of that. No, no, the Bible says you're the sons of the living God, Israel. Now watch the next part. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. That's Christ, he's the one head. And they shall come up out of the land for great shall be the day of Israel. So the gathering is Judah and Israel, the two kingdoms coming back together again. That's the prophecy. This is what Paul, now go to Romans 9 in the New Testament. Paul discussed the same thing that we read in Hosea, chapter one. Romans 9, 24. Romans chapter nine, verse 24. Even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only. Meaning not of Judah only, because the word Jew is short for Judah. So Paul says, not of the Jews only, go ahead. But also of the Gentiles. He called the Gentiles. But now watch who he's talking about, read. As he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. What is Paul quoting? Come again, read that read again. again. Read again, read again. Hold on, okay, all right, let me read. I'm gonna read from 24 again. Even us whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Okay. As he said also in Hosea, I will call them my people, which were not my people. What is he quoting? What is he quoting? Where did he get that from? Who's it? Hosea chapter 1, that we just read, right? Yeah. Get it again. Because remember, he's calling them Gentiles. Let, Hosea, let's get the full quote. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. You see that? So Paul's calling them Gentiles, but he's talking about the children of Israel. That's because we, our names have been changed from the time of colonization and slavery. Our names, our identities were changed. So Paul is calling us Gentiles there. Because during the time of Christ, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those are the primary tribes that were there in Israel. The other tribes had went into Babylonian captivity, Assyrian captivity, they were scattered. Like when you read Acts 2. Remember it said many of them came from every nation under heaven. Okay, those are Jews that came from, it named Arabia, it named Babylon, it named Galatia. Uh, Galatia, it named a whole lot of places. Those were Israelites that came from all those places. The whole book's about the Israelites coming back to the Lord, losing their identity and returning. So basically, uh, the Bible is truth. But it's been misinterpreted. Yes, yes, yes. John 3, verse 16. He uh, said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, modern day Christianity tells you that, hey, God loved the whole world. You know what I'm saying? This is for everybody. But look, jump up to verse 14. Verse 14, John 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. You understand in history, it happened in Numbers. 
Yeah, when 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 the children of Israel sinned. Yeah, yeah, they sinned and fiery serpents were set them up, and they bit them, and much people of Israel died. And the yeah. Lord told him to make a brazen serpent, and whoever of the children of Israel look upon it, he said they're gonna be saved. That's in Numbers twenty-one. So read that again, so you understand the history. I'm read. Planting, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Let us say, as Moses. I mean, the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Read on. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So the same way that the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness to the children of Israel, the same way the Son of Man got to be lifted up. And guess what it's going to be to the, Israel, to the Israelites. Read on. He said that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. He said, but whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Get that in Acts 2 and 21. Let me show you who the whosoever it is. Because remember it said the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up. The serpent in the wilderness was lifted up to who? The children of Israel. The Son of Man came and died for who? The children of Israel. He came and died for us. We the ones who sinned against the Lord. Read that. Acts chapter 2 verse 21. And it shall come to pass. Whosoever shall call on his, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's the whosoever. Listen, read. Ye men of Israel. Ye men of Israel. Hear these words. Hear these words. You see that? The Lord is always speaking to the Israelite throughout this Bible. Now go right back to John chapter 3. And we're going to pick up in verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. What world? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because look, you got the sea world. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, the world of basketball. What sports world? world? Yeah, the sports world. What world? Look, go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. With the everlasting salvation. You see who everlasting salvation from? The kingdom of heaven. It say Israel gonna be saved in the Lord. That's all the prophets always spoke about. Israel getting redemption. Israel getting redemption. Read on. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. What did he call Israel? The world that was without end. We God's world. We his world that's without end. Now go back there to verse 16. Now go to John 17 and 9. John 17 verse 9. John chapter 17 verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. You hear that? He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. So how are you loving the world and not praying for the world at the same time? He let you know what world he's praying for. He said, I pray for them. Them, them is them Israelites. Their world without end is getting everlasting salvation. Read it. He said, but for them which thou hast given me. Who God given him? The Israelites. That's who he was sent for. Read it. Up. For they are dying. Now get there to Matthew uh, 1 verse 21. Now get Matthew 15 and 24. Let's see who was given to Christ. Matthew chapter 15 verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. He said, I'm not sent. But unto the Lord sheep of the house of Israel. He said, that's all he said to him. So those that was given to him. Now go right back to John 3 and 16. Oh, you want to get 18 and 20? John 18 and 20? No, we get, we get, we get, we get uh, all right. 3 and 16. John 3 16. For God so loved the world. So what world is that? <laughs> The world without end. Israel. Israel is God's world without end. Read on. Because another meaning for the word world is the same, uh, it's a class of society of people with the same common goals, aims, and interests. Then you notice that the word love there is not a future plan, it's a past end. That means that the better old thing, that means past tense. That's what he just read to you in Isaiah. The world with no end. Yeah, but if you just read love, it says God so loved yeah. that. That means that he's somebody he loved before. Mm -hmm. You understand? He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right, have everlasting life. Remember that everlasting salvation. When it says Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, you should not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. This should be nothing to be confused about. You shouldn't be ashamed that the Lord came and died just for us and all of us. That's right. These other nations Amen. got their kingdom ahead, but they hate us. They come here, they take the resources out of the land. They built up America. They built up Great Britain. They built up Amsterdam. Everywhere you go, they got a kingdom. Everywhere we go, we in poverty. Yeah. Our people live in, they, live, they have, they live, they got the worst living conditions all over the earth. We don't, we don't supposed to be ashamed or confounded today. Christ only died for us, for the Israelites. Hey, watch this. General, here's a question. Let me see if he get it right. Does God hate anybody? In scripture, he said he lost the cup. Mm -hmm. But, and he, he, he said, oh! <laughs> So now, John 3.16 should be clear to you now. <laughs> so the world that God loves is Jacob. He hates Esau. That one. Well, right there. Right there. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Hey, remember Esau's name was also called what? In Genesis 25. When it said, feed me, I pray thee with that same red pottage. Therefore, his name was called Edom, Edo. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Give me Obadiah. You got it. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Eat your breath. Eat your breath. I'm sorry. That's good. It's good. Obadiah. Watch this prophecy. So how did you read Romans 9, 13? Jacob, uh, have I loved Esau, have I hated, and didn't say God loves everybody. You don't see the contradiction in that? God's telling you, I don't love everybody. <laughs> but watch this. Which one you want? Obadiah. For yeah. one? Yeah. Obadiah, verse one. The vision of Obadiah does save the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. E-D-O-M. That means red people. That's what Edom means. Right? We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathen. So Edom is small amongst the heathen. They don't like them. Go ahead. Thou art greatly despised. People hate Edom. Go ahead. The pride of thy heart has deceived thee. The pride of your heart has deceived thee. So it's letting you know Edom would be a proud race. Go ahead. Thou that dwelleth in the cleft of the rock. You ever heard of the term Caucasian? What? Caucasian. Okay, it's a, it's a term from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Like many Europeans say, I'm German Caucasian or American Caucasian. It comes from the term, the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Read that part again. He said, The pride of thy heart have deceived thee. Thou dwellest in the cleft of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? So in order for Edom to say, who shall bring me down to the ground? That means they have to have what? Maybe wealth. Wealth and power. power. Like they have nuclear power. So they can say, who can bring me down? Who can come to me? Go ahead. Through thou, he said, no, thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. What is the symbol of America? <laughs> The eagle. The eagle. Yeah. Go ahead. And though thou set thy nest amongst the stars. Who's traveling to the stars? Whoa. That's that. Remember in 1969 when America landed on the moon, they said what? The eagle has landed. That's what the prophecies say. They would set to exalt themselves as the eagle. They would travel amongst the stars. They send satellites out there. This is what the scripture is telling you. They are Edo. They are the people God hates. <laughs> Was that a cat? No, sir. Go ahead. This where I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord says he's going to bring them down. That's what he said. So this truth, this gospel has never been taught. We've been shucking and jiving, dancing with the tambourine, playing church. But no, we have to get into the Bible. What is it saying? 
to us. And it's like medicine. We always talk about you know how medicine, the best medicine is the nasty medicine. It tastes crap, but it's good. When you read the Bible, and like what I'm bringing out, what we're bringing out to you, it may seem so harsh, but it's the medicine we need. It, 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 it explains many of the questions that's in the back of our mind that we're always afraid to ask. Why do they do so much evil and get away with it? Now we know, they're Esau, they're Edom. Why do they rule the earth and we're on the bottom? Oh, we broke the commandments. God set them up over us. Oh, I understand. Do you see that? So the Bible identifies everybody in there. Everyone's identified. We just got to read the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you notice there's always two things work together right there, positive and negative, right? Yeah. So what role they play? Let me see if you think. What role they play out of negative and positive? Which role they play? It should be negative. <laughs> <laughs> Which role are we supposed to play? Positive. We're supposed to keep their commandments and play the positive role. Their role is to play the evil role. Our job is to keep their commandments and show the earth we can keep their commandments. Right. And you know what? Um, many times you'll ask a pastor, what must we do for salvation? And they'll say, say the sinner's prayer, right? <laughs> but let's see what Jesus Christ said himself. Give me that in Matthew 19. You got it, Yes, sir. Okay. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one come in. And behold, one come and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So if you want to enter into life in general, what must you do? Keep the commandments. Right. So where do these doctrines come from about say the sinner's prayer? Well, that's not what Jesus said. He said, keep the commandments. Remember, we were destroyed as a people because we broke the commandments. So where did Pentecostal come from? Roman Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah Witness. Where did these things come from? Esau. They, they created all these religions. And we have foolishly followed those religions and rejected what Christ said. Christ said, if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. We go, I want to be a Seventh-day Adventist. That's not what he said. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but these are, this is the devils of doctrines yes, that is out here in the world. Okay? No matter what country we go to, yeah. all these European religions are everywhere, and our people argue. This is why we can never unite. Because uh, in order to divide us and conquer us, what they did when they colonized and enslaved us, let's say a man named Johnson owned us three right here, and he was Catholic. We became Catholic because our slave master was Catholic. Let's say you were colonized by um, someone, and they were, uh, give me a religion. I mean, uh, Baptist. Baptist, you were Baptist. Then us three would argue with you about our religion and your religion. But we're the same people. We can never come together. Then what they do go, let's give them politics. So now we become Democrat, you be Republican or some other thing. We argue with each other, fight each other, and then European East will sits back. <laughs> they, we can never come together. We, the Bible tells us we're the Israelites. We have to come together as that. Keeping the commandments, that's the unifying power. We have to do that. Yes. A, good, a good example of that is the Civil War that happened in Liberia. You gotta ask yourself, would there have been a Civil War among the Civil Warriors? Charles Taylor, Samuel Dole. If they knew that they were the Israelites, if they knew that Christ was like them, and they were God's people, there would have never been a Civil War. There would have never been a Civil War. But the white man knows that, and that's one of his tricks of keeping us divided. Keep the truth of the Bible away from them. Keep the Bible away from them. Tell them, yeah, Christ is white, God is white. So they'll always look at each other as enemies. Because if those brothers knew the truth back then, we know everything is of God as far as the time period when we wake up and he wakes us up. But if they knew the truth back then, they would have been fighting against each other the way they did. And it tore this country apart with the Civil War. You know? 
It's our book. That's what we're showing you. It's our book. Psalm chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. I want you to notice the word enemies. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. A tumult mean they gather together against God's people, right? And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So those that hate God have lifted up the head. Meaning when it says lifted up the head, they rule society and they lifted up the head as God, as Christ, as the Israelites. They set themselves up as us. Go ahead. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel, religion and politics. That's what I was describing a few minutes ago. You're a Baptist, I'm Catholic. We can never join together, we fight. You are Democrat, I'm Republican. We fight. We never come together. That's crafty counsel. Go ahead. They have said, oh, let me read it again. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. We're the hidden ones because the truth of who we are has been hid from us. Go ahead. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. See that? That the name of Israel will be no more in remembrance. We don't remember who we are. Like the things we went over earlier of where the Israelites would be scattered in Africa, taken to the West Country, the East Country, that's been hidden from us. We don't know. The name of Israel has been taken from us, so we don't know. So this prophecies, this is a prophecy of what would happen to us. Now watch this, go ahead. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom. So now he names the enemies of God. It says the tabernacles of Edom. Who's that? Esau. Esau, go ahead. And the Ishmaelites. Ishmael, who's Ishmael? Uh, yes, uh, against uh, Isaac, uh, Abraham's son, Ishmael, by, by this, by uh, Hagar. Who got a Bible dictionary? You're right, you're right. Who got a Bible dictionary? I want to show you something. Show you how the scholars know who these people are. How long since you discovered these truths? <laughs> it's, in America, it's been taught, but what the media does, we taught since the 50s. They don't put it on the news. So that way we don't wake up. That's what they do. They say, oh, if we bring you on TV, don't read the Bible. Then we're not going to go. We want to read the Bible to show the people just the word of God. Find me that, Ishmael. Watch that. From the book of the Arabs. Yeah, it should be the last paragraph. Uh, Ishmaelites. Look up. Ishmaelites. Where is the book of the Arabs? Give it to me. I know where it is. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, Ishmaelite, right, I'll let you see. Ishmaelite. All Arabs follow Muhammad's example, coming with sin from Ishmael. You see that? So when you read about the Ishmaelites in the Bible, that's the Arabs. They're the ones of uh, Islam, Mecca, okay. Muslims, that's them. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites mm -hmm. of Moab. That Moab is the Chinese. And Hagarines. Hagarines are Egyptians. The real Egyptians. Not the Israelites in Egypt, but the real Egyptians. Go ahead. Jabal. Jabal, was a, that's an African tribe. Go ahead. And Ammon. Ammon is Japanese. And Amalek. Amalek, is, that's the white man in Israel. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Those are more other African tribes. Okay. All black people are not the same. Because remember, the children of Israel were in Egypt. Egypt was Africans. Yeah. Israel looks just like them. Okay. They're black. 
okay? But there was a difference when God delivered us from Egypt, okay? So, yes. So that's, that's why, I wonder that's why God always allowed, always hide his people in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Because we look like them, right? <laughs> Remember, if we were All white, sense. if we were white, we, they would do spiders. Remember, all nations were brown skinned in this world. Exactly. All nations were. Mm -hmm. Esau was the first change of color to come to the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. When you look at all nations today, everybody got melanated skin, melanin skin, different shades of brown, except for Esau. You're the only one that's red. <laughs> Waste it away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you notice that he always played the good guys and the bad guys. But he's the bad guy. The good guys he is. He was you when he sent his son to take away the, the rest of the world. His son comes, see? We love him. We come to help you. But his father just wants you. <laughs> you understand? So that's why we have to the out in Haiti, left to Jamaica. They come back now with uh, uh, organizations, yeah, we come to help you. No, you, your father just want me. <laughs> you understand? Know you understand? Know they come with their little dog, then you take them, they're your friends. No, they're the enemy. You understand? <laughs> they play good guy and bad guy. You understand? Mm -hmm. They're the most evil people in the planet. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and repentance is for our people. Because we may do, we, we have done evil things. Everybody here, we've all done evil. The Apostle Paul was a murderer. He, forced Israelites to blaspheme against Christ. But when he woke up, he repented of all that. So that's where you are today. That's where we are, came from that too. So that repentance is for our people, not for all people on the planet, only for the Israelites. There will be world peace once Christ establishes the Israelites, the 144,000, that's the governing body. Then we're gonna subdue all nations. And true justice will go throughout the earth. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 14. I'm going to show the prophecy. Show the prophecy, Joe. You're going you're gonna to watch this. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord would have mercy on Jacob. Does it say the Lord will have mercy on all the people on the planet? For the Lord would have mercy on Jacob. When Jacob, right? And would yet choose Israel. When it says he will yet choose us, because we became wicked as hell. We are wicked. That's why we went into slavery. That's why we were colonized. But he's yet going to choose us because that's why he sent his son to forgive us. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. He's going to set us in our own land. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Meaning the other nations shall be joined with us. Watch. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to cleave to the house of Jacob, meaning obey us. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Listen good. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. <laughs> Can you address us? Amen. They're going to be our servants and handmaids in the land of the Lord. People don't know in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a system where we are going to rule. And all these other nations who colonized us, destroyed us, they're going to serve us and obey us. That's another tour in church. This is why in church they say, don't read the Old Testament. Don't read it. Because there's so many prophecies. The New Testament simply uh, reflects with the Old Testament prophecies. Like if you read about God saving Gentiles, you have to be able to go to the Old Testament to see who the Gentiles are. The Israelites, who would lose their identity. That's them. Okay, and that's not what's not being taught. Was that it? Read on. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, uh -oh. and they shall rule over their oppressors. We shall rule over our oppressors. This is some heavy stuff. Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful, I love that thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when, when you said you first had your testimony, and you said, uh, you know, you didn't know how to read and write. I, I don't know if you said it right, but I know you said you didn't know how to read then. Now you know how to read. Remember in slavery, they brought us Christianity. They forced us not to read and write. We didn't know how to read and write. So everything they taught us, we went with it. Now you know how to read it for yourself. Now you're getting the true understanding. So all the scriptures you wrote down, you can go back and read. 
Because he said you're still feeling kind of empty. Now you can go and learn this Bible all over again. Apply the laws of God, you know what I'm saying, and go out here and teach these young men the truth about who they are. And watch how a real change come throughout all the communities in life. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.